So I was asked um, if um, I would allow the object to travel uh, to the United States for inclusion in this exhibition and along with uh, the father who uh, resides because you should know that this is a, a sacred object that is still venerated today and that it, in other words has an active role um, in the um, uh, Christian service um, that we together uh, agreed on lending this object and uh, we allowed it to travel uh, and be included in this exhibition. So because the object is so important for all the inhabitants of Saint-Nectaire, um, we actually also had to obtain uh, the, the, the citoyens des paroissiens and the, uh, de la de Saint-Nectaire. The, uh, the Donc ils ont tous accepté aussi qu'ils s'en aillent. Uh, ils sont très très, très contents qu'ils reviennent. Um, it, uh, it in uh, uh, ils sont très contents qu'ils reviennent. Ils sont très contents qu'ils reviennent. Um, a quotation which is actually from a contemporary of Saint Bodine, someone who lived during the time when this object was made, which is between 1125 and 1150, uh, a monk whose name was Bernard of Angeau. He un objet fait avec tant de précision, euh, il suivant la forme humaine qui semble nous regarder avec un, euh, un regard si attentif. Qui le regardent en, le, en, en faisant leur prière. Um, I wanted to share that simply because I think that one of the things uh, that connects uh, powerfully to this exhibition is the notion that someone in the 12th century might have responded in what I hope is the very same way that many of us will, that sense of presence uh, that is visible in a statue like this and the sense that as you look at it, so too are you do you have something looking et, uh, back at you? And plus, I think it's that, um, that kind of uh, point of connection between objets, our world and another realm that this gens, object does in such humains. a powerful way. L'opportunité m'est donnée de vous remercier donc tous hein, pour votre accueil donc ici à Cleveland. Et comme so vous l'a dit, like uh, Monsieur le maire, you, uh, nous sommes beaucoup uh, impliqués and, and the, the uh, dans ce long voyage hein, pour cette exposition. Um, uh, mais les monuments historiques français que je représente, je suis aujourd'hui, ont souhaité avoir cet objet qui est une première fois que je présente cet objet aux États-Unis. C'est la première fois qu'il est montré hors des frontières de la France, mais il be known that it was exhibited ici, for the first time in 1900 um, in Paris and that um, uh, based or, or uh, judging from local reports, uh, there were American visitors um, of the exhibition in which uh, the saint was shown uh, who had already expressed their admiration uh, um, for this particular uh, object. So um, it is also my delight to uh, be able to share Merci this moment with you et, um, and to have the object <laughs> included in this uh, important <laughs> exhibition here in Cleveland. Et, um, d'exposition donc dans, dans ce musée extraordinaire de, de Cleveland. These crates are typically double crated, so the exterior crate that's being opened up now is one of two crates that's used to ship an artwork like this. And obviously the indication as to which way is up is very important. This crate remains, uh, as you see it here, all the way from its initial journey in the town of saint Nectaire here to, uh, to Cleveland. In the case of the exhibition space, we have the opportunity of the map on the wall up there. Just in case you are needing to orient yourself, Saint-Nectaire is in the heart of France, in a region uh, known as the Auvergne, which is quite mountainous. Um, so the object made a journey from this small town of 700 people uh, to Paris, and from Paris by air to Chicago. Uh, the object, as it's being opened now, you get your first glimpse of the head of Saint Bodim. Uh, and just to remind you, this is the first time that Saint Bodim has traveled outside of France in his almost 800 year history since he was brought into being. The front face of the inner crate is now being taken out. And uh, guys, I really appreciate your working with an audience because normally this is something that happens. Uh, in a lot calmer conditions. Um, you can see that the object is nested inside the inner crate and has a kind of collar, if you will, that um, stabilizes him in transport. He traveled upright. And there's also a foam base that he sits in. All of this packing is done by people that are um, experienced in traveling works of art and ensuring that they leave one place and arrive at the destination in the same condition that they've left. 
Uh, the advantage of having the gemstones out is that you can see the wooden core of the object. So we're looking at a piece that's made out of about four pieces of wood that have been folded um, within this metal skin. And as I said before, the whole goal of an object like this is to connect us in our world to a place where the saint is believed to exist in heaven. And the fulcrum for that is not only the work of sculpture, but the material remains of the saint who would have been which would have been placed inside in a small cavity within the object. So Shelley Payne, our objects conserver, conservator, is now joining Christine. Uh, they will examine the object together. This is something that actually happens for every work of art that travels as part of an exhibition. Uh, the lending institution often has a courier uh, who will join in an examination of the work with the organizing institution that's receiving the work. And uh, there is a part of a process that you go through, which is a formal documentation process, where you review the paperwork that was generated when the object left against the way it looks now, and then both sides sign off on um, their satisfaction that the work has traveled in, um, in good shape. Some of you might see the label that I'm now looking at um, that identifies that uh, says Saint Nectaire on the back. That was actually placed on the object when it was exhibited in Paris, I think in 1965. So you like to try and get the cart that the object is on as close to the case that is the destination of the work for display as close as possible. Barry and Joe are now, this is usually where they come to the curator and say, where do you want this? And uh, it's just going to be centered in the, uh, on the deck. So he's wide enough and secure enough as an object that um, special mounts aren't required to affix him to the deck. Can you guys check front to back? Just... Yes. So as Barry is pointing out, you can put the body where you might want to see it as a curator, but you also have to be attentive to the laws of physics. With the vitrine dropping down, you want to make sure that the vitrine itself uh, clears the object. <laughs> 